Hi, welcome to Hospitality Live with Rupesh. Each week, we feature an industry leader that will share the latest trends and the best strategies to help you grow. Now, welcome your host, Rupesh Patel. What's up, guys? Guys, comment and let us know where you're watching from. Super excited about this conversation. This is episode number, let me get this off real quick. It is episode number 96, guys, four away from the big 100. I can't believe I've been doing this for 96 weeks in a row. And I can't believe that you guys have been joining me almost every single week for 96 weeks in a row. Guys, comment and let us know where you're watching from this episode. I am super excited to learn from and share with you. I'm super excited to learn about hiring, which is a huge, huge issue, challenge, struggle, whatever you want to call it in our industry. And I think this is an opportunity for all of us to learn. Thank you so much. This is episode number 96. We're going to learn how Rob and his team hired 2,000 people in just 90 days. And uh, he is a senior director of recruiting at Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma. We're going to discover tools that they use to improve their hiring process that you can too. Plus find out what you could do to get interviews right now as we all struggle and try to get people even into our doors and then learn proven strategies for any size hotel. All right, let's see where people are watching from. Uh, and some people are listening. I know people are, uh, are tuned in from their car. All right, so we have people from uh, Texas, Alabama, ATL, North Carolina, Miami Springs, Canada, uh, Beach, Go Rob, yay. Um, thanks guys, thanks all of you for joining us. All right, so uh, let's see. Um, this episode, and by the way, we have Sarah Danishi on with the Hospitality Minute, so stay tuned, should be on just a couple minutes. This episode is sponsored, sponsored, and let's see, let's like pull it up. All right, this episode is sponsored by smartguests.com. Somebody put it in the comments, uh, smartguests.com with over 4,000 555 uh, customers now nationwide. Smart Guest helps you improve your hotel's operations, marketing, reviews, guest service scores, which are a topic right now also. Uh, find over 50 tools that can drive revenues, that can turn guests into happy, loyal guests. And thank you so much to smartguests.com. Somebody, like I said, put that in the comments so you can, you can click on it and bookmark it. Um, all right, so... Thank you so much to Smart Guests. And let's see where people are. All right, we have North Carolina in the house, ATL in the house, Ponce Inlet, India in the house, New York in the house. Guys, comment and let us know where you're watching from. This episode is actually going to be uh, really actionable where you're going to learn a lot of amazing things and, and some tools that I didn't even know when, when, I, uh, when I was talking to Rob yesterday. And, you know, every week we talk about a mindset. And this week's mindset, let me see if I can pull it up. And I I think I forgot to add it on to my um, to my post. Hang on a second. Let's see. All right. This this week's mindset is this right here, and it is. Hold on. Let me say. Pull it up. Hey, come on. Come on. Upload. There it is. All right. So, not taking everything personal or personally is a superpower. And uh, I posted this four days ago, and I think over nine thousand uh, people saw it, and a bunch of people commented. And yes, it is a. Uh, is it's a thing. It's a mindset. Like we can't take everything personal, and sometimes we feel like we should, but not everything matters. And 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 I and for me, you know, I feel like if you don't have control over that situation or whatever you're in, you know, I, I think you uh, take it, you know, take it off the off your plate and not take it personal. I think that's a superpower. Anybody agree? And have you had to deal with that recently? Um, I'm going to ask Sarah this question too, because, you know, we're all trying to go through life with something happening and, or a lot of things happening. And, you know, for all of for us, us in the hotel business, we have, you know, our family life. And then we have this hotel life that we're all out, you know, doing and trying to struggle with and working at. And, you know, we can't take everything personal. And I, I, I took that personal or I took that to heart a couple of weeks ago when I was like, you know what, why am I taking this personal? Why am I taking that personal when we can let a lot of things go? And so have you guys ever had to deal with that before in your life? And I think that's, I think, I think it's a mindset. That's my mindset this week. And uh, let's see if my buddy Sarah is on. Let's see, Sarah. Hi, yeah. I'm Sarah Dandeshi from Ask a Concierge. Every week, I'll be sharing the latest hospitality and travel news and updates in a segment we like to call Hospitality Minutes. What's up, Sarah? Good morning. Don't take this personally, but 
<laughs> have you had to do this in the past? Like where you're like, I'm taking a lot of things personal and it's driving myself crazy and maybe driving other people crazy around me. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the whole thing is, is like, especially when so much of your work is, is like a reflection of you, when you take pride in what you do, you do take things a lot more personally. And then it's like, wait a second. I actually always, um, and even if, if you like interact with like other people, maybe they say something that might be hurtful towards you. I actually always think of two things when that comes to, when that happens. If somebody says something and it might be a little bit hurtful, I, I one, I actually consider I'm like, what's the source? Where is it coming from with them? Like, what are they coloring that with? Like, are they having a hard time? Is, is like, uh, are they, are they meaning it? You know, well, where is that coming from? Is it a reflection of them? And then the second part that I always consider is like, okay, what amount of truth is there to it? Um, and that's just always kind of a good way to kind of just like check in with yourself. And it's like, okay, that's, you know, this is a little bit too, per it, it's a personal comment, but it's like, there's some truth to that. So maybe that's something I need to work on or if it's something totally off the wall. So, um, but yeah, always checking in on that. <laughs> that's what I had to say. <laughs> it's a vibe. It's a vibe. You know, you got to You got to keep it going. All right. What's going on with uh, the news and updates and hospitality? Cool. Lots of interesting things happening. Okay. So first thing we'll talk about Southwest, Southwest Airlines. Um, well, first of all, if you've been paying attention to the airlines, I'm sure that you have realized that some, if let's say you were traveling or you need to make a change and you tried to call them, it was a hard, you, you had a hard time getting somebody on the phone. So I wanted to share this quick little story just because I think it'll um, be interesting about how it applies to us in, in hospitality and in hotels specifically. But Southwest Airlines is uh, made a big announcement that they are going to be raising their wages and they're looking to hire more workers. So they've uh, they've announced that they're going to be raising minimum pay to 15 an hour for about 7,000 of their employees and the raises will go into effect on August 1st. Their goal is to just make it a more attractive workplace and hopefully be able to um, not only attract, but also retain more workers, especially right now. So keep your eyes peeled on that and definitely see how that goes. Uh, all right, next topic. I, I know we like hotels. That's why we're here. But interestingly enough, almost 20 million Americans will camp over 4th of July weekend. As we know, one of the biggest trends in, um, in travel just has been people looking for more outdoor options. And that also extends to camping. I even did it myself two weeks ago. That was fun. Um, so uh, it's just kind of interesting to know that a lot of people are going to be committing to uh, to staying in camps and doing that. So it's a little bit of a different sort of travel experience. But um, some of the key states are going to be California, New York, Pennsylvania, Texas, Colorado, Michigan, Florida, Florida, Arizona, North Carolina, and Ohio. So um, if you happen to have properties in those areas, get the people before they go camping or afterwards, because I'm sure they will appreciate a hot shower. I did. All right. Next topic. Um, Resorts World Las Vegas officially opened their doors um, on the on June 24th. Why is this a big deal? Uh, first of all, I don't know if you guys are big fans or lovers of Las Vegas, but it is a hub of hospitality, all the hotels there. And this was the first integrated resort that has really opened in more than a decade. So this is a really big deal, especially coming off of the heels of the pandemic that uh, Las Vegas is able to do this and open up such a incredible property. And it basically has three hotels on the one pop property as well too. So kudos to them. And again, keep, keep your eyes peeled for what they're doing and how they're navigating. And then our final topic, I thought this was really interesting, Google. We've all been talking about this. We know there's this pent up demand for travel. Google has revealed the scale of pent up demand um, for travel in post pandemic trends by basically showcasing what trends they're seeing. What are people searching for? So demand for travel in May was up 270 percent compared to May of 2020. Uh, where to travel to has spiked um, as well as travel related content on YouTube. I share this because if you are looking to have your property out there, if you are thinking of, of what does that mean, do not underestimate the power of YouTube as well. Searches also for can I travel have jumped more than 800% within the last month alone. Um, inquiries for travel to hotel booking app, have also climbed more than 100%. So people, again, are really, really looking. Also, millennials and Gen Z are the generations that are most eager to travel again. 
keep this in mind. I know it's so easy to be like, oh, whatever, millennials and Gen Z, but they actually uh, are responsible for 350 billion in spending power. So don't ignore them and be very, very mindful. Seeking comfort, convenience, and good reviews are the things that they are looking for the most, as well as unique experiences. So there you have it. That's it for today's Hospitality Minute. I hope you learned something. I learned a lot and I learned, um, hold on, let me see if we can pull this off real quick. Um, I learned that I'm not a good camper. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Same. Same. Sarah, I, we, did we talk about this last week during <laughs> during the show? Not really. I don't think we really did. We kind of I glazed over it. Yeah, let's not get into it because I think uh, no, I'm not a good not. camper. I, I'm sure you're not either. I think we're we like hotels and we like staying in the comfort of a comfortable bed and a hot shower in the morning. Wow. Although here is a tip: uh, we have some camping sites around our hotels, and when we know the weather is going to be really bad. We will go out to those campgrounds and talk to the GM saying, hey, if your guests need an, a place to stay or take a hot shower or deal with this weather, we're here for you. We're, we'll take care of them. And I think that's an opportunity instead of saying, no, we're against campgrounds and we're against these other kinds of businesses. Um, partnership partnership and partnership. I think that's an idea. <laughs> One, That's a great, great idea. And that was also why I kind of brought it up because even where I had stayed at this place, Wander Camp, a couple weeks ago, when talking with the owner of the camp, she was like, yeah, most people really kind of only stay here like one or two nights for the experience and then they go and stay in a hotel. So it's definitely not to say like, oh, people are opting to camp instead of staying at a hotel, but definitely think of how you can uh, tap into uh, those individuals and get them probably after they've camped so that they can really enjoy that hot shower. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, it's, we've seen that a lot where if you don't have a partnership with these campgrounds, they're going to send business other to other hotels and you're missing an opportunity. So I know it's, it's a, it is an opportunity for all, all of us to get uh, some more rooms filled. Um, Sarah, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me everywhere online at Ask a Concierge. That's my handle on all platforms. I love to play on Instagram. So come join the daily party there. I will, prom I will promise to keep you entertained or at least try to. Um, but also connect with me here on LinkedIn, Sarah Dandeshi, or head to my website, which is askaconcierge.tv. Absolutely, Sarah. It's always a pleasure having you on. We'll see you next Wednesday. Yes, Happy Fourth of July. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Same to you. Stay safe. We'll see you next week. Definitely. <laughs> Bye. All right. So Sarah's awesome guys. Give her a follow. Her YouTube channel is amazing. She sends out videos and posts videos almost uh, weekly. And I think a few times a week, definitely reach out to her and follow her here on LinkedIn, uh, YouTube, definitely uh, all these other channels. She's on every single channel. So definitely follow her, ask a concierge. Um, and all right. So we are going to our featured guest today. And today our guest is, and I'm so excited to talk about this topic, and Mr. Rob Dromgul. He's a senior director of recruiting at Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma. Let's bring him on. Welcome to the show, Rob. Hey, top of the morning. Thanks for having me on, Rupesh. I'm really excited to talk about my favorite topics, which is uh, hospitality and recruiting. It's a great combination. And, and this is a perfect time for us to talk about this as all of our hotels, including mine, are struggling to find people, find qualified people, find just people that's gonna are ready to help and ready to work, and 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 it's a challenge. It's been a challenge, and it's gonna be a challenge through this summer. Uh, but I want to know, and we're gonna get to it, is how you hired two thousand people in ninety days. And guys, for the folks that are watching, you're gonna discover the steps they took to achieve this goal. Plus, you'll get the tools, techniques, and that you can use today to improve and, and solve some of these issues that we're having, all of us are hiring, ha having around hiring. And uh, Rob, tell us about your background and uh, what you're passionate about. Uh, sure, certainly. So I've been actually uh, recruiting for uh, 25 plus years, MBA. I've had the pleasure of being in both high tech and banking and uh, communications, mobile communications. But most recently for the past two years, I've had the honor and pleasure of enabling the success here of Choctaw Nation. And if many of your viewers around the world um, are not familiar with the Choctaw Nation, we are one of the largest tribes in North America. We have more than 200,000 tribal members and I'm speaking to you from uh, the headquarters in Durant, Oklahoma. 
And our reservation boundaries are so large, eight different states within the U.S. can fit with inside our boundaries. It's about a four hour by four hour drive. And it's an entire nation uh, that my recruiting department and HR team support. So we have 20 plus casinos, three resort properties, um, but we also have nine hospitals. We have travel plazas, we have cattle ranches, even and farms and grocery stores. So uh, my team recruits for a pretty diverse set of positions. Um, but by far the largest amount of placements that we've had for this, these 2000 have been hospitality centric. Yeah. Yeah. And this is uh, what we're all doing right now, trying to recruit people to walk into our doors. And, you know, we reached when, when we talked yesterday, I was like, oh, we're not doing some of these things that you explained to us. And so I think people want to know a different approach to hiring as a lot of things have changed in, in our industry in the last year and a half. And, you know, we're trying to bring people back and tell them, hey, hospitality is actually a, an opportunity for your career and for you to grow. And so um, how did you get to 2000 people within just 90 days and um, and, and really quickly share that story. Absolutely. So um, to, to head it off, first of all, I mean, it wasn't just like a light switch where you bolt a tool or a technology on or copy us exactly and, and it's going to have an overnight success. I mean, everything that we did was rooted in research in partnership with our um, our clients, like your GMs of your properties. We partnered heavily with them, um, also with the My Human Resources team. They do fantastic work. Um, and also the employees themselves. Um, we actually spent a lot of time talking with each of the different business units within our properties and understanding what our employees demanded, what they wanted, and we listened to them. Um, and maybe we have another show where we can talk specifically about some of those tactics and strategies uh, to create that foundation. But for us once we actually did that baseline research we went live and i think if you had to pick one theme um that could be a, a pretty easy takeaway uh, for the listeners of this show it's it's to go mobile and we can talk specifically about what that means um, because what we found is the employees that your hotels are likely hiring today are not going to take the time to create a profile and go through a career site. Um, but they do have a mobile device. And what we did is we combined the use of mobile technology and went to where the candidates are and allowed them it, with kind of a, a, a traditional hiring methods of job sites on property or job fairs on property. So I think if your listeners can have an attitude of going mobile, and using job fairs on site, they can really increase their success. If they had spent the time talking with their employees and HR and, and integrated, we can talk specifically what I mean about Go Mobile if you're interested. Yeah, and we're definitely going to get to that. So you did a little bit of research. You did surveys amongst your staff and your team and your leaders there saying, all right, we're going to hire for these positions, but what do those people actually want? And so you got feedback and I like that because a lot of times as leaders, we're like, oh, we know all the answers and we don't need the feedback from our, our associates or our other leaders within the property itself. And so I like that you talked about just doing a little bit of research before you actually make decisions. Um, now, you guys have a big outfit and you have maybe a bigger budget than maybe some smaller hotels like like we are, right? Mid scale, I, I was saying the average hotels like a Hampton Inn if we're talking about uh, people that are watching, right? Less sure. the rooms, and so these strategies are actually in line with what you're going to share with us. And it's not just for a larger hotel, or it's not for a you know an independent, but it's kind of overall. Is that correct? Uh, absolutely. We two of our resorts are actually would match um, their smaller properties, and and we actually do not have a huge recruiting budget. Um, our team is doing this uh, pretty shoestring compared to some of the larger high tech organizations. But a lot of the techniques and tools, I think, can be used by smaller properties and they can get results because we've seen it happen. Awesome. Well, let's get into the mistakes because I think that's like the number one thing that we want to discover. So then we can learn the answers. What are some recruiting mistakes that many hotels or many um, leaders make when they're trying to bring on people um, in a short period of time? I would say probably the number one mistake that we've experienced that some of your um, listeners can uh, listen to is not partnering with their HR recruiting teams. And I'll bring an example. So 
Previous to a better, more closer partnership, um, I imagine your hotels are hiring housekeepers or custodians, and, and they have to do that. And oftentimes, you wouldn't necessarily trust your HR staff to do the interviews on your hiring manager's behalf. And what we found is when our hiring managers were doing interviews, their interview to hire ratios were roughly five to one. And when you're talking in, a, in an environment that's post-pandemic where candidates have a lot of choices, you don't necessarily have enough applicants to be able to afford a five to one hiring ratio. And what we encouraged is like, hey, listen, hiring manager, you're busy in your restaurant, you're busy running your hotel, um, let your HR team schedule these interviews and talk to the candidates. And what we've seen is a reduction to a little bit less than two to one hiring ratio. And that means you need literally less than half of the applicant flow in order to fill your openings. As long as you trust your HR staff to hire good people, they can do that for you. You run your hotel, let HR and recruiting do what they do best. Yeah. Now, what if you don't have an HR company that's on property that is kind of there to support you and you're doing it on your own? Um, is there a mistake that folks are making as they're on property and doing it themselves? Absolutely. It's speed. Um, you do not. Right now, every single person who's applying for your jobs are likely applying for five to 10 other jobs. And what we found is every single day that we waited to schedule that interview and bring them on property and interview them, um, our ghosting ratios would increase. So what we've encouraged our hiring manager partners to do is let recruiting, let HR, even if you're a hiring manager and don't have a human resources staff, if someone applies, you get them on the property, you interview one time, and you offer immediately on the spot. Yeah. You do not let that candidate get away. If they're yeah. on your property and they're interested and they're if they're qualified, they're interested, they're available, do not go for multiple rounds of interviews. Yeah. One interview, one offer, do it on the spot. Make it happen quick. Because if they if they walk out that door, guess what? Um, they're gone. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna be gone. I mean Jack in the box is going to give them a thousand dollar sign on bonus for, for goodness sake. So um, speed is absolutely paramount for your success. Yeah. And what we implemented is if you like the person, they, they were qualified for the position. Our thing was get them also signed up for the entire hiring packet right then and there. Absolutely. That way they are not saying, oh, I didn't get, I'm not like committed to it because I didn't do it, sign anything or I didn't uh, fill any applications. I didn't give them my Full, full information, right? And they're sure. like, most hotels in the past would say, all right, come on Friday or tomorrow, come fill out, you know, here's your uniform, come tomorrow in your uniform and fill out the new hire packet. No, that's a mistake. Have them fill everything out today so they're committed. And I think that's one thing that we've done that's been really successful as far as getting people in and hiring them on the spot. And I think speed is definitely a mistake that we've made in the past and that we're trying to cut out and what else what's one more mistake that hotels make and, and hiring teams sure. make that, you know we can improve on um well I, they're not texting their people and what i mean by this is for very little money you can go to uh, vendors like an easy texting.com platform that costs almost nothing and it even if you don't have a huge career site, you like you likely have a spreadsheet of former applicants and there's nothing that prevents you from uploading that spreadsheet into a technology like an easy texting.com. And you can send a mass text out um, to announce former applicants about a hiring event. So if you're doing a job fair, say two days from now on your property, um, for very little money, you can send out hundreds of texts to your former applicants and drive traffic to that event. Um, Amber, who's one of my staffing managers here for the grant, she had some open interviews for food and beverage yesterday and her and her food and beverage team, um, I know she sent out about a thousand texts and they drove traffic last night. They did 58 offers for food and beverage. And I know you know how hard it is to hire cooks today. So it's to hire good servers, bartenders and cooks in this market is incredibly difficult, but she was using mobile technology to drive people to her open interview event I and, love that. and it yielded results. And yeah. um, that's the type of really bootstrapping mobile methods you have to use to move quickly. So she used her mobile phones to text these former people, drove them to open interviews on the property. They offered on the spot 
and we're moving to get them on property to be working as soon as possible, not letting those other local companies snatch the money. That's awesome. All right. So, so far we're talking to Rob and, uh, you know, he's with a huge, you know, a, a, a big group. And I love that. We're, so this is episode number 96. We're talking to Rob Drom Ghoul, the Senior Dur uh, Director of Recruiting at Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma. And now we've learned the mistakes. Now, if you've liked this episode so far, hit the like button and comment. Yes, this is awesome. We're going to get into the techniques now of actually doing that with mobile uh, focused. And I think this is a mistake that we've made. And after we talked, I'm like, wait a minute, you're right. We're hiring housekeepers or maybe hiring, you know, line level employees that maybe they don't have an email address. Maybe they don't have a laptop or a computer that they're looking at every single day. Right. And I just learned that I was like, wait a minute, why are we not doing the whole mobile thing? Uh, and so explain what you mean by mobile friendly, mobile focused. Sure. So there's three different methods that we've gone mobile and this can be done for very cheaply for anyone listening today. One, don't ignore the scale of Facebook. Um, you can post a Facebook job for little. You don't even have to sponsor it. It doesn't cost you anything. Mm -hmm. And the great thing about a Facebook job is you can post your say your housekeeper and you can do it for your location. Um, your candidates can apply for your Facebook job on their mobile device. Right. They don't have to actually create a profile on your company website. Now, the downside is, is you as a hiring manager, you have to monitor that Facebook post and you have to be responsive to those candidates, because if you go with 24 to 48 hours, and you don't contact them. They're likely going to be gone. But by now, you also if you want to throw a few dollars at it, you can sponsor that Facebook job to say within like 25 miles around your hotel property, and that's going to drive an increased traffic. Um, it's very inexpensive. You might even be able to do $5 a day for a particular job ad. And you just cannot beat the scale of Facebook because there's billions of profile users. Um, yeah. And you wouldn't think that a housekeeper might be on there, but absolutely they are because the data and the demographics that we've seen show that. Um, another platform that you can use that's very inexpensive and for the cost of $500 a month, you can go to indeed.com and you can purchase a word from them. And, and this is a text to apply technology. Is purchase a what? A word. So what I mean by that is we partnered with Indeed, $500 a month, and they let us use the word Choctaw, C-H-O-C-T-A-W. And in essence, we can put signage up in our properties or on billboards or even on social and say, all someone has to do is text 22100 in the word Choctaw, and they can answer a few questions on their mobile phone and they've applied. It literally takes 30 seconds. They don't have to fill out a profile. They don't have to go to some career site where they're never going to fill all that information out. Yeah. All they have to do is send a text and they can apply to your property. And that literally costs you $500 a month through Indeed. And, and then you're basically limited by your marketing budget. But you can use Facebook. You can use whatever social platform of choice to, to share that word. Like you mentioned Hampton Inn earlier, like if you're in Hampton Inn, South Carolina, your word might be Hampton, South Carolina and or Hampton SC and text 22100 and apply. Yeah. Um, but what we found is we've had roughly about 2000 different candidates that would just text us and apply very easily. And then we now the kicker is, is you have to respond to them within 24 to 48 hours to get them into the process. Every day that goes by, um, you're going to have a spoilage rate. So it's because as we've talked about, speed kills. Yeah. And then I think on Indeed, it also says we're going to hold this candidate in this in the in the queue for X amount of days. Right. After that, they drop off. So um, speed is definitely one thing that everybody should consider when they're doing the hiring process. There is no, no more like five days or three days. I will get back to you. We we're going to go do your background check and we're going to go do all that. Save that for actually when you're actually hiring them or maybe a day before they come on. Um, speed is definitely the name of the game right now. And we're talking about mobile. So you talked about Facebook. You talked about text to apply, which I never even thought about. You know, we're think, we're talking, let's say, housekeepers. They don't aren't checking their emails every day. If you do a survey of your housekeepers, they're not checking their emails like maybe we are because we're – you know, doing accounting, we're doing all these other things that we have to communicate with, you know, different folks um, in the industry or within our, 
our network of you know vendors they're just coming to work and and maybe that might they might be texting their friends but they're not sending emails out every single day so that was a, a an eye opener for me and i think that's an eye opener for a lot of folks that hey maybe um this is an opportunity where they can apply really quickly and one other key thing that they should, your uh, your listeners or watchers should consider is I know Indeed.com is free. You can ingest your jobs to your property for free of charge. It doesn't cost you anything. But the downside of that, all it is, is a hyperlink that gets to your site. Now, you do have an option on Indeed to use something called Easy Apply. And the advantage of using Easy Apply doesn't cost you anything is your candidates can apply for your job on a mobile device right? They, all they have to do is hit the apply button. You don't even have to require a resume. And all you're going to get is their name. You're going to get their phone number and you'll get an email if they have one. And now if they have a few dollars and they want to drop um, some money to sponsor that ad, they can limit the costs to however much money they want to pay. That might be $5 a day. That might be $10 a day. But so if you can have a budget, say of $50, sponsor your housekeeper ad, and you can allow your housekeeper candidates to apply for that sponsored job on Indeed, and you're going to get a number of people. Um, and it, they'll do it through mobile device. But again, same caveat, they're going to apply on their mobile, so it's going to force the hiring manager to go to that dashboard and to respond to those candidates really quickly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think there, there's just within what you just shared, there's a bunch of other opportunities that kind of align with each other, or you can kind of put them on top of each other to make it easy uh, for us to really get the word out and definitely Facebook is definitely an opportunity because everybody's on Facebook at least once a day. And I, I'm sure these folks that you're looking for are on Facebook hanging out. Another platform I recommend is also Instagram where there are people, you know, they're on there. Google ads is another opportunity where a lot of hotels are like, what is Google ads? It's actually, very, if you just create a free graphic on canva.com um, and it's like, it's a design tool make put that graphic into a google ad with for not a lot of money and you could target specifically in a market uh within miles you can do demographics you could do uh, a lot of different things to target the right person i think google ads is a definitely an opportunity do you guys use google ads uh we well i mean we do have sponsor our jobs on google and it drives it to our career site but we haven't had a huge success with that but i will say on instagram and uh your co-host might get a kick out of this dally if you're listening i know he had a great success story where we actually targeted some um chefs via instagram and he actually communicated with that chef through instagram that chef came to one of our job fairs as a result of this outreach just like hey i saw your stuff on instagram come out to the job fair let's chat he ended up accepting an offer on the spot and he ended up bringing us eight different cooks uh into our restaurants on the property as a result of that instagram outreach so dolly that was a huge success story um and and so absolutely the instagram platform can work if you're if you have enough time that's kind of more of a sniper strategy um but if you've got the resources and the time it's one you should definitely employ okay now we have people kind of lined up how do we not get all confused and you know with our schedule and we're running the hotel we're doing this and that and the other as far as operations how do you actually pick a time for everybody to come in at the right time and i know you shared some tools with me yesterday can you share like some maybe scheduling tools that right now i think you're like sure uh, let me um, check my calendar and you're like all right this person's gonna come at this time this person you're writing it down is there a better way to do it Absolutely. And by the way, I did not think of this. This is what's, this is why you hire great people who are smarter than you and uh, just set them loose and have them hire. But Jesse Carney, one of my staffing managers in gaming, um, implemented on his own. He actually paid out of his own credit card at first. And I was like, what are you doing? But he, he signed up for a tool called Calendly. Mm -hmm. And what he was doing is we had these thousands of previous applicants and he was sending a text message to them about our job fair event and allowing the candidates to schedule an interview at the job fair the next day or the day or you know two days in advance and what he was finding is that candidates were really engaged they can click and pick on a time to schedule an interview at the job fair that they chose and it was funny because the candidates didn't know we're just driving them to the job fair and we're going to offer them on the spot that same day and so the candidates would walk in to sign in and they're like hey i'm here to see jesse 
And at 3.15 to interview about this particular job. And we're like, absolutely. And we would guide them to the hiring manager who's waiting at the table and they would do the interview and offer them on the spot. It was great. Yes. And, um, Calendly so we, works. Absolutely. Calendly works. It's really inexpensive. I mean, it's, I mean, I want to say it's like $12 a month uh, for an account. So you as a hiring manager, um, you can use that link to zap out to hundreds of people at once and they can basically fill your calendar. Why spend time scheduling interviews when you can just do that via text at in mass? Yeah, and and I just found right, just right, back and forth great. emails or back and forth communications like calls like, hey, I just left you a message. Can you come at four o'clock? Then they call back. Look, I'm not I'm busy at four because I'm taking my dog or my whatever my kid somewhere. Then it's like a back and forth thing. And then if you could just save a lot of time, because I think Calendly, no, it does. It it syncs with your Google calendar and your phone calendar. So then you just have everybody lined up, uh, maybe in 10 minute increments and you can set what the increments are, right? Absolutely. So like, so let's say you're using all of the uh, techniques that we advised. So you went on to Facebook mobile, you went on to e Indeed Easy Apply, you used Indeed Text to apply, and then you text in mass through easytexting.com all of your candidates. And then you could just basically have your calendar up. You don't have time to call 200 people to set up an interview. You just send out that mass text. You let the candidates fill those slots and you interview as soon as you can. And you offer after one interview and you get them into the pipe. For us, it's just speed and enabling. I mean, one interview, one offer. This is this is awesome, guys. If you've loved this episode, hit the like button right now and comment that you did like this uh, and then share what tools you're using right now to kind of make the process easier. And this is what we need right now. We're doing a lot of different things at our hotels where we might be working the front desk. You might be doing all these other things um, that you don't have time to really focus on scheduling. So perhaps you have an associate at the front desk that's maybe not busy at a certain time checking your Indeed, uh, sending out these, you know, these uh, messages, replying to these messages as fast as they can. That way you have a team and it's not just yourself. Because I'm sure that you have your, through your interview process, it's not just yourself going through, you know, hiring that one person. Maybe they might talk to a few people or at least one other person just to make sure that we're all in line with that position. Uh, let's say just for housekeeping, maybe your housekeeping supervisor goes through the interview process that same day and then offers them a job or not. Right. And I think that's an opportunity where we, we've got it down. We have it down so that our recruiters have partnered with the housekeeping supervisor. We know what a good housekeeper looks like. We allow our housekeeping supervisor to go be a housekeeping supervisor. Let us hire the people for you. Right. You're busy doing your thing. And and because what we tend to see is hiring managers can get a little bit overly picky and That's we true. don't have we do not have the candidate flow for a one to five interview to hire ratio. There's sure. just not enough people out there. And I'm not saying to lower your standards, not at all, but just trust some of your assistants to understand what it is that makes a good housekeeper and whomever that assistant is, whether it's your HR person, your recruiter, maybe it's a more junior housekeeping supervisor, um, enable them to make those decisions for you on the spot. You do not want a candidate to have to talk to multiple people if at all possible. Right. No, that, that actually makes a lot of sense. And, you know, along with all of this stuff, you also have to have some reasons why they could jo should join your uh, organization like competitive pay and some of these other things probably get into that is i think a touchy subject right now amongst you know is your hotel even making money are you guys open at a percentage um are you what, what does your staffing look like right now so there's a lot of other things that are involved in it but we're here to share how to actually find those folks how to make the process easier and this has been amazing rob thank you so much any last words or tips that you could share before we um go and implement some of these things no, but um, if you want to have us on another show, I'd love to invite my uh, chief human resources officer, uh, Dr. Gary Burris. He, him and his team have reduced attrition by more than 60%. And uh, some of the tips and techniques that he's done through nominal groups, I think, could be really helpful to your hospitality professionals. Um, so if you want to do a later episode on how to reduce attrition at your properties, we'd love to chat with you and we can share some tips and tricks. Absolutely, guys. Everybody think. Rob here for sharing these amazing tools and tips. And I am going to take these back and definitely implement them. Uh, there are some opportunities, especially the mobile side, which I never realized that 
not everybody has email, right? And that's it. That is a that is a thing right now. And you know, the faster you can do this, the easier it's going to be on everybody, and it's going to make your life easier when you're trying to make um, quick decisions. Rob, thank you so much for joining us. I look forward to having you join the show again. Absolutely. Uh, where can people find you? Any, uh, um, well, I'm, uh, I'm on LinkedIn at uh, Rob Drum Google. Um, that's primarily the platform that I live on. Um, I, am, I'm, I, I do have an Instagram account, but I have to confess I don't post there that often. But now after watching Sarah and her talking about the millennials, I might have to get a little bit more savvy on platforms outside of LinkedIn. But um, we do still have 2,000 job openings here at Choctaw Nation. Um, if people just go to careers.choctawnation.com, they can look at our more than 2,000 openings. Um, you can kind of get a gist for what we're hiring. We are actively hiring across the board in hospitality. Um, if you are open to low cost of living, low taxes, and no traffic, um, maybe you want to escape the big city and come out and work and help enable the success of the tribe. Because all of the money that our hotels make go back to pay for tribal services. Um, there's nothing wrong with shareholders for publicly traded companies. But if you want an opportunity to give back and live in a really beautiful area with a low cost of living, we'd love to have you out here employed by Choctaw Nation. Rob, Rob, girl, thank you so much. This is a great conversation. Learn so much. Thank you all that, that tuned in for listening. Um, let's chat again soon. Absolutely. Anytime you want to talk about recruiting, you call me. And same for human resources. I'm sure we can get someone on. Absolutely. Guys, follow Rob on LinkedIn. And uh, hopefully we'll get a link to Instagram that will follow you too. Rob, enjoy your day. Thank you so much for your tips. Absolutely. Have a fantastic afternoon. Guys, that was awesome. Hit the like button right now. I wrote down a bunch of things that we're taking back to our team. And, you know, it's all about speed. It's all about that mobile that I wrote down. And it's really making the process easy for us right now. You know, there's a lot of stress going on with hiring people. These are some opportunities that you can take back to your team and take back to your hotel and really make a difference. Guys, thank you so much uh, for tuning in. Next Wednesday, we have somebody amazing on. Guys, if you want to support me and the show, definitely go and uh, support smartguests.com. Somebody put that in the link uh, or in the comments right now. That way you can go and improve your hotel with customized uh, and creative hospitality and business tools. Thank you so much to smartguests.com. And you can also find, let me see where I get, hold on, let me, let me pull it up before I forget. Um, you can also support me in three different ways. You can join my YouTube um, and it is youtube.com forward slash Rupesh live. And let's see if I can, do I have it up? No, I don't have it up. Um, you can also subscribe to the show every week. If you want to find out if this show is going live with some amazing people, subscribe to my show by going to rupesh.co forward slash show, enter your name and information. And I will send you a personal message saying, Hey, we're going live with this topic. Come join us and I'll send you a link to. So that is an opportunity. And finally, you can go back and listen to all of these shows uh, on LinkedIn, YouTube, um, and Spotify. And the Spotify, if you just go to uh, anchor.fm forward slash Rupesh CO, you'll follow me there. And of course, on Instagram and LinkedIn. Guys, thank you so much. Thanks for this conversation and thanks for joining us. Please take care of yourself. Please take care of each other. I'll talk to you next week. And there it is.